Welcome to the Rock is George podcast. I'm your host, George Dion, and this is episode 64. Thank you for tuning into the podcast through our website, rockisgeorge.com, on one of the many podcasting platforms that we appear at knac.com or on YouTube. My guest for this episode is Jan Hoffman. He is the bassist and one of the founders of the German progressive rock band Long Distance Calling. They have a new album coming out on August 26th called Eraser Through Ear Music. Long Distance Calling is known for their progressive rock instrumentals, although they've had some vocals throughout the years. Eraser is a fantastic album. It's not something I normally listen to, but it certainly caught my ear. So let's hear from Jan Hoffman of Long Distance Calling. I ask everybody the same question out the gate. If I knew absolutely nothing about Long Distance Calling, how would you describe the band's music to me? Well, it's funny. Uh, if somebody asks me, I always introduce the band as a bit weird music because to me it's a bit weird, but in a positive way. It's just instrumental rock, but uh, I think it's pretty emotional and it's very diverse in terms of dynamics. So it's pretty soft and melodic and heavy and everything at the same time. So it's a wild mix of instrumental rock music. And you have a new album on the way. It comes out August 26th. It's called Eraser. It's on Ear Music. You describe yes. this album as being a tribute to the gradual erosion of nature by man. So I'm assuming that climate change issues are big on the band's mind. Exactly. So when we came up with the concept last year, it was just our drummer. He was uh, watching a documentary about the Greenland shark. He's uh, about to die out sometime soon. So there's just some individuals left. And this uh, led to the fact that we tried to find, that we try to make a list with endangered animals. And then we picked some. And then we decided that every song represents an animal. This, of course, means we try to put this in the music as well. So of course the bee sounds very different from the gorilla or from the reno or the sloth sounds pretty uh, different from the human, which is the er eraser. And he's also one of the species. And this is the, the title track and the last song of the album. And he has two roles. He's uh, the only species who can fix this. And he's all, uh, also a species that suffers from it as well. So that was an interesting idea. And then we came up pretty quickly with the concept. So when you come up with a concept like this with music that has no words, do you kind of lay out a basic outline of the themes you want and then come up with the music? Or do you have music already created that's like, you know, this would be good for this subject or this would be good for that subject? Well, on the old albums, we always just did the music and then we try to find uh, an idea which binds it all together. And with the last two albums, like the last album also had a concept, this was about artificial intelligence. So, um, and for this and the new album, we had the idea first and everything and the subject, and then we wrote the music um, to it. So, which was um, a different approach to the older albums, which was really interesting because with the artificial intelligence thing on the last album, it was clear that it should be like futuristic and electronic stuff in it. And for the new one, it was pretty clear pretty quickly that it should be very natural and it should sound like really natural, like really well produced, but there's no sample, no electronics on the album, nothing. It's all real. And that was very important. So yeah, for this album, there was the, everything else was first and then we came up with the music. So I think as far as the music goes, I listened to both albums. I listened to uh, Eraser and I went back and I listened to um, How Do You Want to Live? And you're right about the different, the, the different sounds and tones and themes yeah. of the albums. But what I noticed is that there was a lot of um, cinematic soundtrack kind of feel like I was like I was watching a movie that actually went along with the music. Yeah, that's actually a huge compliment because that's what we also uh, what we always try to do and it's it's still a dream for us to do a real movie soundtrack or a series soundtrack sometime but yeah we want to paint a picture when people listening to the music that's very important to us 
that you you watch your own movie in your head when you're listening to the music and that's great when you don't have a singer because there's no dis, um, no distraction from something there's just the music and if you want to dive into the topic and the theme you can inform yourself but you don't necessarily have to and you just listen to the music and that's what we always try and it should be a wild ride with a lot of emotion like it's very aggressive it has the most aggressive parts we've ever done the most quiet parts we've ever done so and that was important for this album to represent the whole spectrum of nature ahead of the album's release you've done music videos for camila giants leaving and eraser music yeah. video must be somewhat important for a band that is mostly instrumental it's very important like we really take much care of everything like the photos the artwork the videos because if you don't have words everything else becomes more important but we realized also with the last album that especially as an instrumental band if you just make music you just can't tell anything in interviews except from well there are some new songs and they sound a bit different it's much more important to have everything around it and to and to create a little universe where people can inform and dive into it. And we have this uh, cooperation with uh, Greenpeace also. So, and they made a special side for us and the album. So if you want to get informed, you can get much more information. There are petitions and everything. So you don't really have to, but you can if you want. And I think that's a really nice thing. Uh, long Distance Calling, uh, this is their first release through ear music how did you guys uh, get together with ear music we um, had a management like our contract was expired it's like a football a player or something else like um, you have a deal and then it expires and then you start talking and of course we also talked with inside out again but then ear music came up and also some other labels and it was just a lot of talking like do they get what we want to do as a band it's not always about money like it's important if you want to make a good album and a good a sound and a good promotion and everything but it's not the most important thing and e music was just very ambitious and convincing and we realized that they spent a lot of time to research what we are and what we did in the past. And it's something completely different for them as well, because they do very different stuff. Like they have prog bands, but we are always a little weird animal, like in the zoo. But that's good because then it's something special and they can work on. And uh, they are very like music enthusiasts. And that's what we are as well. And this was the most important point at the end to decide to go to ear music because they're very passionate about the music. Eraser is going to be released on multiple formats, digital, physical copies, vinyl is there's a lot of different vinyl packaging that you guys have and different colors and stuff like that. Yeah, is yeah. that something the band gets involved in or is that something that uh, ear music brings to the table? No, no, we're involved in everything. That's what we told them from the first place. If that's not the case, we can't work together. We are really, control freaks with everything so but of course we want to have a, a wide range of stuff because with this kind of music it's so important like i don't know if uh, i don't know how it is in america but here in germany if you make like hip-hop music or something like physical product is dead and like nobody cares it's just um, digital and with our fans as i would say it's 50 50 maybe it's even 60 40 for the physical side like people really like to have nice product and the uh, uh, like a vinyl box and different colors and last year um, between the contracts we released uh, an EP ourselves on our own label because we had um, the chance to before we signed something new and we did I don't know four or five different colors and everything was uh, sold out immediately because people and some buy the same album three times in uh, three different colors it's like nerd, nerd stuff, but that's good. Like it's really, they really like this. If you take care of the stuff and it's nicely done and everything. And that's what we really like. And we have uh, like the artwork guy 
normally we couldn't afford him anymore, but he did shirt designs for us like 10 years ago. And now his, his main job is like he's working for Vans and Volcom. He does uh, uh, illustrations for the New York Times, even, even though he lives there in Germany. Like he wakes up in the morning and has an email from New York Times and they want some illustration for a certain topic until the end of the day. So, and he's, uh, yeah. And he's very expensive now, but for us, he made a nice like, um, like a friendship deal and he does everything, like everything in the booklet and stuff. Everything is hand drawn. He takes care of the advertisements of the social media stuff. He wants to see everything himself because he's also a nerd. So, and um, same is with the album producer. Everyone is a big nerd. Like everyone wants to do the best possible I think that's great and important. Long Distance Calling recently had a little mini tour through May called Seats and yeah. Sounds Tour, um, yeah. an extraordinary audio visual experience. So I assume you take everything that you put into the album covers and in the videos and you bring it to the stage as well. Exactly. It's seated shows. We played churches and theaters and like really nice venues. Everything was seated and we have we had um, video screens on the stage, so every song got a video. So, and it's a, yeah, it's a, like an audiovisual experience. It's also with um, surround sound. So there are um, speakers, not only from the front side, if you're like um, sitting there, there are all, uh, also some speakers behind you and left and right. And some of those uh, like um, sample stuff or uh, sounds like fly through the room. So yeah, it's an experience actually. And that's very important. Like when we started the band, we ag agreed if we do it, we do it right. And not just like half ass or something, because when you go instrumental, you have to do it really right. Otherwise it's, um, I think it's pretty boring quickly. If you just do a regular show, just without a singer, you have the feeling that something's missing and we don't want to have the people to have the feeling that something is, is missing. On the other side, it should be something special that you maybe haven't seen before. Is this a different stage show than what you bring to the festivals? Yeah, because um, production-wise, it's too difficult. It takes a lot of time to like um, set it up and sound check and everything. So on festival, like it's a regular rock show. And next year for the new album in Germany and Europe, we will do a regular rock tour for the first time since a long time, but also with um, visuals, but it's not like I'm seated. It's like a regular shows, but with all the like, um, like visual stuff, but we will do seated shows again. So we want to have both because we have a pretty diverse audience. Like it's everything from a young indie guy to, um, to old Pink Floyd uh, guy. And I think like on the last tour, there were people, I think one show in Leipzig, there was a guy who was really, and I'm not over exaggerating, I think he was really 80 or something. And for him, of course, it's difficult to stand up for two hours. So for those people, it's, it's nice to sit and they just want to have an experience, but we also have a lot of like metal fans and stuff and they want to stand and to march and everything. So I think we do both and that's cool. Are you planning on bringing any of the audio visual tour to DVD or some type of uh, live presentation on YouTube or something? Uh, we haven't talked about it yet, but I'm sure we will record something next year. Like we will do an exclusive show in Germany end of next year in a super nice seated venue. It's a big one. And this, if it works, it's the biggest show we've done then. And this will be with orchestra and videos and everything. And then we should record it. Otherwise, it would be stupid. So um, let's see. You got uh, more tour dates coming up as you go forward? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, it's planned for next year. But because of COVID, you don't know. Like, this tour we did in May was postponed three times. It should happen in September 20. And it was happening in May 22. But now we hope that it works. It's a February and March next year. It's like in Europe in February and uh, Germany in March. And then we already have the first festivals booked in Finland for next year and stuff like that. Festival booking starts now. Mm -hmm. And what you can really say that ear music is doing a really 
good job and like i'm spreading the word we never had so many interviews it's really really cool and especially and this was also one of the point but that's just between you and me uh, with inside out everything was fine but they concentrated on germany because it was a sony company in the end mm -hmm. and major records they focus on the main country so for the last album there was over almost no us press and something which is stupid because if you look into spotify we have the spotify for artist app where you can see all the statistics us always is number one for us with the like and streams always um before germany but we've never been there but most of the listeners are actually from the us and so of course it makes sense to make some like a promo in america is is uh playing america something that you guys are looking forward to or do you have already Absolutely. Have that's a big dream since a long time it costs a lot of money for a german band and this is pretty unfair if a, a, an american band tours in europe you just have to book the flights and that's it we need work visa for the us it's really everything's really really complicated the transport the distancing is everything is but we really 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 want to do it at some point is long distance calling the only music project you work on i mean a lot of guys these days they get their hands in multiple projects and bands it's the main thing but uh, at the moment there's a uh, like a drummer and one of the guitar players they have a black death metal project as well but that's funny because when i met them 15 years ago they had a death metal band as well so we all come from like a metal background somehow and this band was born because we wanted to try something different that we hadn't done before so this was just a jam project out of fun no expectations and nothing and then it worked somehow because it was so new and different for us and the chemistry is um, like i'm i'm really good like musically so we just did it but we all have a metal background so yeah uh, Flo and janos they have a black metal project at the moment and they even wrote it almost in the same time where we wrote this album though so they are really like a crazy like and they can do this all the time a workaholics but not for you just one thing at a time right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's all I got for you today on the new album Eraser comes out August 26th on Ear Music. I like what I've heard so far. It makes me feel like I'm listening and kind of visualizing my own movie. Exactly. So check it out. Give it a, uh, a chance and spread the word. I think it's really an interesting album. It's very colorful and something you might not have heard before in this form. So it's really something different and a lot to discover and i recommend headphones absolutely you got to get the full experience without yeah. outside distractions and it sounds really uh, like i'm really really good and it's the first album we've done where like we did a lot of interviews now with recording and studio magazines and stuff like that when it comes to the sound and the production because nowadays everything is pretty artificial with um, samples and stuff like that even the rock albums there are like um, drum samples on every drum like it's always like in um, the same um, sounds actually and we decided we want our own sound so we rented a very expensive studio for the drums and the microphones are insanely expensive um and that we rented but you can really hear it and, and this is a real uh like um, drums like nothing artificial or something and this is something you won't hear a lot nowadays so and this was important to us yeah absolutely there's nothing like going back to the roots of creating music with everything being real versus the the kind of the easy way out with technology exactly like the plan was let's do an album like in the 70s like a proc album like in the 70s but with but with completely state-of-the-art sound now and that was in the plan actually but the the way to do it was like the old way but we wanted it to sound really modern and or like i'm timeless and nice and like i'm state of the art in terms of production that that was important because if you do it with the samples you can do an album in one week and that's not a problem but if you do it right it takes a lot of effort and time and blood and tears and sweat <laughs> but it pays off i think in the end because it's something real people can relate to 
you have more emotion that you can hear, I think, and feel while listening to it, even the um, like um, strings. It's so easy nowadays to use strings from the computer, but those are real people. You can really, really feel it, I think. And with a saxophone in a sloth, you actually can hear him breathing. And that's really, really nice. What I heard from the album is fantastic. And I look forward to hearing the rest of it. I'm so curious about the reaction now. It starts to get like impress um, reactions and, and everything is really, really nice, actually. So like uh, people really seem to like it because everybody can find something on the album, I think. But it's not something typical. It's not a metal record. It's not a rock record. It's not a, I don't know, it's everything at the same time. And that's something I really like because I'm listening to such different stuff I like quite um, quiet piano music. I love Pantera, I love Pink Floyd. It's so many different stuff and everything's in this. What do you think about Pantera going back out on the road with uh, ah. Zach Wild and uh, uh, Charlie Benanti from uh, Anthrax? I was talking with a friend on the festival last week and I'm not sure what to think about it. If it's just making money, I don't think it's cool. I think it's it will be well executed. It's great to musicians. I'm not sure if Phil can bring it up again. I don't know. Like it's actually one of my absolute all time favorite metal bands, but it's, I don't know. Like if Dimebag would appreciate it that they do it now, I'm not sure because he quit the band because he didn't want to go any further. I don't know if it's cool or not. And I'm not sure if I go, but probably yes, because I want to see it, but uh, because actually I saw Pantera twice and it was not that good as expected because Phil was in such a bad shape. It could have been better, but now I'm not sure if he can sing this um, still. I'm not sure. People to work with them and they got people that'll exercise yeah. them. And they got people that'll do stuff. If there's, I hope. if there's money involved, they'll get this guy into yeah. shape like they got Vince Neil into shape for his current tour. Yeah, because I personally think it's, it's a unique band. They had a unique sound. And for me, it's the heaviest band ever. It's like so hot and aggressive and great songwriting, everything. It's just such a good band. I think Zach Wilde's been kind of keeping the sound alive for the last yeah. uh, couple decades with Black Label Society. Charlie Benanti is also very good. So yeah, I think it, it will be good. I'm just not sure how it feels when you see it and the two guys are not there. <laughs> which are re which were really important for the sound like the guitar sound was very unique the drum sound was very weird but very um unique if it's two completely different guys i'm not sure but it will be played well of course so i um, mean that's not something i'm concerned about but uh, i don't know how it feels let's see but i'm a fan so i will probably go i think <laughs> well, maybe when they come through Germany, they'll give you a call and you guys can open up for them. That would be great, Pantera. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just want to say, actually, we would love to have the Porcupine Tree shows in November, but they don't have any support band, unfortunately, because this was would be the perfect tour for us. Porcupine Tree is uh, also one of the bands, the few bands we can agree on as the four people in the band, because we all have very different musical taste. And there's maybe Pink Floyd and Isis and Porcupine Tree are the three bands we can all agree on, really. So yeah, I would I would say what you know, you described your band as being weird type of music. I definitely put it in the Porcupine Tree as also being one of those weird kind of music. Really, really weird, but really, really good. And I think the new record is good in Germany. They were number one in the all charts, number one, which is crazy um, for this music. After 13 years, they sold more records than the pop artists here, which is really good for this kind of music, I think. It's a great sign that real music is not dead yet. So that's good. Yeah, I, I interviewed Stephen Wilson one time and he was listening to some weird record in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget what he's like, ah, oh, it's just some weird thing I'm working on for myself. I love it. I love weird stuff. If it's done good and if it's good melodies, it can be weird because you will remember it. And that's a good thing because if it's too normal, maybe you forget about it pretty quickly. So I think it's important to stand out a bit and to be a bit weird is not a bad thing. 
Well, I've had a good time talking to you, Jan. I wish you the Thank best you. of luck with Eraser, and uh, I've definitely spread the word to get people to check this album out. Thank you very much. Once again, I want to thank Jan Hoffman of Long Distance Calling for coming on the Rock is George podcast. Be sure to check out their latest album, Eraser, out on Ear Music, August 26, 2022. Great progressive rock instrumental album. I highly recommend it. Take a listen on your favorite music streaming service. If you like what you hear, go out and buy a physical copy. Support the artist. To find out more about the band, head over to longdistancecalling.de. I'd also like to thank Chip from Chipster PR for making this interview possible. You've been great. I've been George Dion. I'll see you again soon.